Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to waste your time, but if I could just please waste your time and ask that you subscribe to the channel right quick, I would greatly appreciate it. Maybe like the video too. Solstice of Heroes 2020, uh, I mean, just Solstice 2022 is now upon us and with its introduction come a slew of changes to how the mode works from the ground up compared to last year. Upon logging into the game, as usual with these events, you'll be met with an on-screen graphic and a notification to speak with Ava Levante in the tower. Going to the tower and upon speaking with her, you're going to be handed a full set of legendary Solstice armor. And yeah, that's right, Bungie finally did away with the starting blue armor, so you just skip right on over to legendary. Now after throwing on this full set of armor, you're going to speak with her once again, to which she's going to hand you a new item called Silver Leaves. Now these Silver Leaves are obtained by completing just about any activity in the game while wearing at least one Solstice armor piece, and they're used to create Silver Ash, which is a currency that's used to upgrade said armor. So to turn these leaves into ash, we're tasked by Ava to go into the European Aerial Zone, or EAZ. Here we're going to take part in a new game mode for Solstice that is called Bonfire Bash, which I'll be honest here, I just prefer compared to previous years. How this mode works is you're going to have a limited amount of time to run around the map, kill these enemies called igniters, pick up their ignition ball, and throw it into the bonfire. You can easily find the igniters by looking up at your map at the top left as it'll point you in the direction that they're in, but quick tip, the spawn points that they have don't actually change. There are a handful of spawns that these enemies have and they'll always reside in those same areas. From time to time you'll even see a hive ship, fallen skiff, etc from afar that's going to drop them off at that spot so spreading your team out and farming them as they spawn in isn't a bad idea. Now every so often you'll have a mini event where Taken will infest the area and basically keep you from throwing your balls into the bonfire. Holy shit that sounds painful, I mean could you imagine? So basically all you gotta do is go to the marked area on your map, kill the Taken, then resume exactly what you were doing. Now after throwing 20 balls into the bonfire or running out of time, the big baddie boss will finally spawn, you can then kill him, then collect the loot at the bonfire. This loot is going to drop on the floor and it's going to consist of the solstice shotgun, the new hand cannon, or any of the solstice armor, and alongside this loot you're also going to have the leaves in your inventory convert into ash. And also, sometimes the loot that drops on the floor will drop inside the bonfire itself for some reason, so it's basically immediately going to go to your postmaster, so make sure that you're checking it in between runs, so nothing important gets pushed out. Now, after all this is done, head back to Ava once again in the tower, and she's going to get you situated with the Solstice event card by having you claim your first challenge, which will then open you up to the rest of them. So what exactly is the event card? Well essentially, it's just to help guide you throughout the event and tell you what to do to progress, with the top half of the event card featuring challenges, and these are going to award you kindling, which are going to be used to upgrade your armor for the white glows. The bottom half of the event card is an absolute cash grab from a multi-billion dollar company, so please do not buy the bottom half of the event card, it's a complete ripoff. The event tickets that you earn via the challenges on the top half of the event card are a tie-in with the bottom half battle pass ripoff, so again, you can just ignore it. The only thing of importance on the screen are the challenges that award you with kindling, as upgrading your armor for good looks and high stats is the whole point of the event. Now, once you've earned your kindling from claiming your challenge, you'll then be able to upgrade your armor with it. So go to your inventory and highlight a piece of armor that you'd like to upgrade, apply the kindling to this, and this will then open up an option for you to apply Silver Ash to the armor piece to increase its stats. Again, remember, we ended up getting Silver Leaves by just running any activity in the game, then we turn that into ash by running bonfire bash and then now we can use this ash to upgrade our armor stats after we use our kindling. Now this is where things get a little grindy because there are three total tiers to upgrading your armor. Firstly, you do what we just did there by getting one kindling by, you know, doing a challenge in the event card, and then using 20 ash to upgrade the armor, that's going to get it to tier 1. And then there's tier 2, which is going to require you to use 2 kindling, which will require you to do 2 challenges, and then 40 ash, and then finally you're going to have that tier 3, where you're going to need to use 3 kindling at one time, a bunch of ash, and then at that point you're going to unlock the white glows for your armor, which will then open up a bonus option for you to then focus your armor stats with more ash. 
Keep in mind that once you've applied the kindling to an armor piece, all future armor pieces that drop for that slot will have the kindling already applied. For example, I have a tier 3 kindling on my helmet, so every solstice helmet in my inventory and any one that ends up dropping for me, I'll never need to put any more kindling into it and I can just skip to the step where I just throw some ash into it and then focus the stats. Now, this process with kindling and ash can take quite a long time, especially if you're trying to max out a full armor set. Taking a look at the event card, you'll see many different challenges here, with every single one of them awarding you with kindling, and each armor piece is going to require a total of 6 kindling to max out. There's a total of 24 challenges, which means that you need to do every single challenge in order to get a full set of white glow. It technically should be more, but your class item doesn't require any kindling, so if you are going for that full set of white glow, all 24 challenges in this list, you gotta complete them. Now, you have some pretty basic challenges in here, like defeating targets anywhere in the system, doing patrols, etc. But then you have challenges that require you to complete 25 total Crucible or Gambit matches, as well as another challenge which can take upwards of 10 strikes total to complete, which if you haven't gathered, can take quite a long time. So if you see any videos claiming super fast white armor glow, they're basically just lying to your face. Some of these challenges genuinely just take a really long time to do. That said, there are ways that you can optimize these challenges by doing multiple at a time. For instance, there are challenges that require kills with specific weapons like hand cannons and shotguns. So you could just pair that up with running strikes to try to knock them all out in one go. And that kind of stuff's pretty self-explanatory and depending on the person, I'm sure many of you will find your own ways to tackle these challenges. So with all that said, kindling as we've established is pretty straightforward. You're going to do your challenges to get them from the event card, dump a total of 6 into an armor piece to get the white glow, and you're good to go. But silver ash is also needed, this is going to play a part in upgrading your armor each tier, as well as selecting the stat focuses, so how exactly are you going to farm a lot of silver ash? Well, there are mainly three ways that you can go about this. The two solo player friendly ways are playing Mayhem Crucible, which is available for the first week of Solstice. The matches in this mode fly by super quick and are easy to play. And then you also have the public event method, which is best done in the EDZ, as there's always a ton of them and they're super quick to do. But if you're looking for hands down the best farm but will require a fire team, getting to the Talk to Finch checkpoint in the second mission of the Witch Queen campaign and just reloading into it with a fire team is definitely the play. Get to the point in the second mission of the Witch Queen storyline where you just need to go talk to Finch, leave the mission with the character you want to have the checkpoint on, and then load back in on your buddy with another character, talk to Finch to complete the objective, this is then going to complete the story mission, and profit. You literally do nothing, cap out at 100 total leaves, and then load into Bonfire Bash as much as you want to convert those leaves into ash. This is basically just going to give you an endless supply of the upgrade materials you'll need, and you really just don't have to do anything at all except for load in and load out of a mission, as all you gotta do is just talk to an NPC and you're good to go. Now with all that said, there are a few miscellaneous things to know that I can't really fit under one category. First up, make sure that you're doing your Bright Dust bounties that Ava gives you at the tower. These are going to net you 200 Bright Dust each, and you can do two per character every single week that Solstice is around. And this means that buying the new armor set for Bright Dust is super easy to do, especially if you still have some seasonal challenges lying around to complete. Secondly, the armor recovery that Ava offers at the tower really serves no purpose other than just getting your armor back if you accidentally delete it, but she also has a second set that requires you to dump a bunch of ash into it to buy it from her, and this set really serves no purpose at all, so only buy the Glimmer one. It's literally a ripoff and doesn't help you whatsoever. It's literally the same thing. And lastly, this is a new recording by the way because I've been waiting to hear some more information about this before I put out the video. Apparently, after you completely max out an armor set so let's say that you got white glows across the board on your titan and then you move on to your warlock in times past whenever you move on to a second character you would be able to do the objectives twice as fast this time around though it doesn't look to be the case and you're gonna have to regrind everything just as much as you did on your previous character in previous events let's say there was an objective for doing 10 crucible matches and then you did that on your main character and you did all the challenges whenever you would go to your second character and 
you then had to do those 10 crucible matches, it would actually end up only being five. And then on your last character, it would go three times as fast. This is not the case with this year's solstice and I'm not exactly sure why. There's also a really weird bug, I'm assuming it is, where you can't transmog any of the solstice armor. There's just a lot of weird stuff going on, but I assume that this will be fixed as time goes on. But currently as of the time I'm making this video, that's not the case. With that said and done, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed, got some information out of it, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I got plenty more videos on the horizon, like a review of the new hand cannon we got this event, as well as my overall thoughts and opinions on how Bungie handled Solstice this year around, so stay tuned for both of those. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching to the end and supporting the content, and shout out to my Patreon supporters which help keep the channel alive, as well as my Tier 2 patrons, Homebase Serenity, Admus, Vile, John, and Onrock, as well as my Tier 3s, Senko, Austin, and Gloomia. Thank you all so much for watching everybody, and I'll see you all next time.